Well, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie. I hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. Today, I want to chat about selling Magic the Gathering collections. I want to ask this question or answer this question for you. Should you sell your Magic the Gathering collection? Uh, I've done a lot of videos on like how to sell your Magic the Gathering collection and, and how to determine if you want to take the time and energy and work that goes into listing your cards on TCG Player and on eBay versus selling to somebody like me. I'm always buying Magic Collections, kitchen table TCG at gmail.com. Um, I've, I've already done that video deciding whether or not you should do that, but today I want to sit across from you and pretend to ask this question, should you sell your Magic the Gathering collection. And this is a conversation that happens all the time in the store. There's there's people who come in and like, hey, I don't know if I should sell my collection or not. I don't know if I'm ready to get out of it. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and this is a question I think a lot of LGS owners have to answer uh, from time to time. And I try to do so with a very, uh, I'm obviously biased. Like I want you to sell me your cards. Let's get that out of the way. I want you to sell me your cards because then I, that's how my business operates. But I also want what's best for you as a customer in my store, of, uh, really, as a customer in my store, I want what's best for you as well. And so I try to take a different approach for it. And the first thing I usually ask people is, are you talking about selling out of Magic the Gathering or are you talking about selling your extras? And this is a big distinguishing factor. I myself have sold out of Magic the Gathering three times in my life. And every time I've done it, I have regretted it. So most of the time when I'm talking to somebody, I try to get them to do this. And that is keep your decks, keep your commander decks, keep your favorite, you know, format. If you play popper, if you play, you know, modern, whatever you play, keep your favorite decks and keep your commander decks and then sell the things that you don't often play with. That is like the first kind of baseline. It allows the person to get in like an idea of what it feels like to sell their collection and not walk away with all this seller's remorse. One of the worst things that happens in a store is when somebody gets buyer's or seller's remorse and they don't feel good about the purchase or their sale that they had. When that happens, I hate it. And so I wanna give people the opportunity to dabble in selling their collection or dabble in selling some of their stuff before they take the plunge because I don't want them coming back and feeling bad about it because I want them to come back to the store and play another game or do another thing and feel like this is part of their community and part of their home. And so you want that kind of positive atmosphere or part, positive uh, experience and selling part of it I think is a really big deal. And most people don't care about their trade bind. Most people don't care about their box of extra cards that's been in their attic. Most people care about those one or two commander decks that have been with them for forever, and they should keep those. Now, when it comes down to should you sell your collection, another big thing I think you have to ask is what is your financial, you know, current lifestyle like? A, a large amount of American people are in debt and have credit card debt and have all this over, you know, they're not making their mortgage payments. And those are people who I feel like, yes, you should just sell your stuff <laughs> Get yourself out from underneath of that kind of thing um, and, and don't worry about the hobby side. I mean, keep a deck or two. You should still be able to have fun, uh, but you shouldn't be focusing all this energy and money towards things that uh, when you have life, things that actually matter in the way. Um, and then there's a whole nother subgroup of people who are asking this question, uh, do I or do I, should I save these cards because they're gonna get more expensive down the line? Um, and so this is like a weird one. For those who have debt, I think the, the real answer is obviously to sell your cards or whatever. But for people who are wondering, are my card prices going to go up? I think there's a much better opportunity for you. If you care about the value of cards and if you care about the idea of investing and you're trying to move that way, maybe selling your cards isn't the best bet. Um, but instead, maybe trading your cards into a store uh, to get that kind of store credit, you know, get a little bit higher of a percentage. Like for us, we would do, it's almost 20% higher if you do store credit than cash. Um, and apply that towards something like dual lands or, or reserve list cards that you can then add into your commander decks that maybe you don't already have, but that will hold value better than something like a modern card. What we have seen in this last 10 years of Wizards of the Coast and Magic the Gathering is that the modern staple, the cards that are good, uh, right now feel good or in the past felt good, are not safe. 
they will reprint them a lot. They will reprint them at some point and print them into the ground. That will happen. Uh, they will see different play. The, the metal will shift. They'll come out with Modern Horizons 15 and uh, it'll, it'll wipe out all the cards from Modern Horizons 1 and from 2. And I think the, the point of this is that the, the use of your card matters. In other words, if you have a, let's use a $50 staple. If you have a $50 staple and you're using it in a commander attack and you're getting value out of it, I say you keep that because you're getting value out of it. It doesn't really matter what the actual amount of the card is because you're using it, you're playing with it, you're enjoying it. That's the point of the card. You're doing what you're supposed to do with a trading card. But if you got that $50 card and you just put it in your binder and you're like, man, I don't want to sell it because what if it goes up to $75? If this is a modern card, it's not going to go up to $75. And as soon as it goes up to $75, it's going to get reprinted and go down to $20. And so I think all the cards that a typical Magic fan or consumer is using that is not part of their decks, I personally think you should go ahead and sell those or trade those in to get things that work better for you uh, in terms of uh, potential longevity of the value of your card. So trade those in for dual lands, trade those in for um, you know that Wheel of Fortune that you've been wanting, trade those in for something else that has some ability uh, to ho hold value long-term. Um, but don't just sell it and, and cash out. Instead, stay in the hobby, I think, in, in that regard. The last group of people, I think, are people who are ready to exit the game. And this is a really tough one. I, I have dealt with this with a lot of people. Um, the story's been around now for two and a half years. Um, and, and I'm starting to see this, this slew of people who, uh, at one point or another, exited Magic two or three years ago. And now they're starting to rotate back in. They're starting to get interested. I get messages and like, oh my gosh, Bloomboro looks really cool. Um, and this is the group of people who like, they got out because either they got mad at Magic or the, a much bigger group of people, life got in the way and things started happening and they had kids or they got married or whatever. So they sold their collection thinking life has changed permanently they back up and they come back around to the side and life slowed down a little bit. Their kid got, you know, three years old or they've now been married for three years and, you know, you're not in this newlywed phase or whatever. And at that point, they start saying, man, I wish I would still have my stuff. I don't want to start fresh. And now it's like not that big of a deal to start over fresh and magic because there's a billion pre-cons. There's a billion ways to hop in almost, you know, locally, at least everybody has decks to let you borrow as you kind of get your feet wet and that kind of thing. Um, but that this group of person who's saying, I want to sell out of magic. I think if you're wanting to do that, I think you got to really, really make sure that it's time for you to do that. Uh, because I think there's a lot of regrets after three years when you're ready to come back in uh, to say, man, I wish I would have just held on to my cards. And maybe it's like, get rid of your bulk, get rid of your trade binder, get rid of, a, you know, a, a, the, the bulk of your collection. But keep, again, the things that matter the most. Uh, because at the end of the day, you might be frustrated, you might be busy right now. But life slows down and the memories and the attachment to this game is really deep. Um, and there's going to be times that you want to come back in and engage in the hobby and you're going to want some of that stuff. So um, those are my thoughts on this kind of question. Whenever somebody comes in and asks the question, should I sell my collection? These are the kind of things that I try to ask them to figure out where are they in the process? Where are they in the mental space of this? Um, and again, uh, if you're ever looking to sell your collections, we do buy them, kitchentabletcg at gmail.com. But make sure it's the right thing. I don't want to buy a collection from somebody who doesn't want to actually sell them. Usually we can't agree on the price anyway. Usually that person wants like 80% in cash for their cards. And I have no, I mean, at that point you should just go sell them on TCG Player. Nobody's doing that work for 5% after fees and shipping, right? Like at, at some point, if you're not actually ready to sell, we're never going to line up on values anyway. Um, 
but even if you are ready to sell, make sure you really engage with it and really think through it. Uh, Cause the worst scenario is when somebody sells and then they have those regrets on the back end. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, why should people or why should people not sell their collection? What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? And if you're looking to join the discord server, kitchentabletcg.com, come hang out. We have a great time. We do have a couple of different support tiers there as well as the free server. Uh, for $5 a month, you can get some discounts on things. And then at the $20 a month tier, you get access to distribution, um, access to reordering things from distro. So have yourselves a great day. Be kind to the people around you. We'll see you again next video.